Hey everybody, welcome back to Six Ages, Ride Like the Wind. I'm just looking over where we left off last, last time, and we have uh, someone out here foraging for food. We do have a food yield shortfall, which is not great, hence why we're foraging for food. We only have food for two seasons. Um, though, Zakorda here seems to think that our food stockpiles are adequate. I don't know if he's if he's thinking right. Maybe it's because it's almost uh, almost harvest season and that will bump up soon. But we have a two people two people here talking about we should establish another permanent trading route. It would be easier if we found some exotic goods. But so we're talking about building a trading route. You're talking about sending out a caravan. You're talking about exploring. So let's go ahead and try to send out a caravan and see what that's like. We have a trading partner with more of a Coggin uh, of the wheels. Let's try to establish a route, please. And who should we send it to? Choose the leader of your expedition carefully. Their skill will determine how good of a bargain you make. Um, okay, so who's great at bargaining? Um, well, I guess that'll be, well, is it, should it be you, Tereno? You have no combat experience. Um, you're like, you don't even have that option. So instead, I will choose Zatanna here, who also has excellent bargaining, but has some combat experience. Should something bad happen? Yeah, whatever. We're not going to know a Karna's trading blessing. The Grey Wings have the most herds. The Sky Racers have the most horses. The Zeth, Zeth Marings have the most goods. We should buy and sell some trade goods. We should sell some trade goods and buy horses. Yeah, I hear ya. The Valley is plagued by bandits. I, I don't think it is. It doesn't say, but... We should assign a larger escort or first devote some time to scouring the area for bandits. After we send a caravan to each rider clan, we should be able to support more trading routes. Um, who do we want to send to establish a... So we've established a... Uh, a caravan or trading route with Morikog in here of the rams or the wheels. So if we wanted to just continue with the wheels... Is, are there any of them that like us? They mock us. They keep slaves. Uh, we owe them a favor, so that doesn't sound great. So, can you please show me someone that... Okay, I like the, like the dotted line. That's great. Set up with Grey Wing. We can set up with Brilliant Hoof, with Black Spear. Grey Wing's close. A little hitch on the bottom of my screen. Did anybody see that? A little bit of a hitching. Um, and the check mark must mean we've sent a caravan to them to the past, right? Yes, clans you've sent a caravan to have a check mark. Gotcha. Okay, so Dre Grey Wing, we're allied with them, though they mock us. Well, you know what, Grey Wing, um, how would you like to? Establish a trading route with us. Pretty please. Hey, plus food. The foragers and I have returned from the east. We found lots of good apples, as well as many baskets of earth cherries. Um, what's an earth cherry? Uh, as we smoked out, and we smoked out a hive of bees as big as my fist and took their honey, we loaded the tribe wall and brought back some food to feed the clan for a season. Hey, way to go, Ellen Dry. Um, we've learned that the eyes of Gold Clan, we don't like them, they don't like us, engaged in a year-long ritual just which just ended with them attacking the Porganosi clan. The eyes of gold were victorious and gained magical benefits. Their ancestors adopted the last survivor of Elampur after it laid waste was laid waste by the Rams. The eyes of gold are well known for their hatred of rams. Eyes of Gold attacked Porganosi. Where can we see that on the map? Eyes of Gold are here. Porganosi down here.
So we do need those horses, sure. But we also need to maybe stock up on some goods. Still got a food yield shortfall there, guys. Does anyone want to tell me what I want to do? We should raid. We should send an emissary to each wheel clan. And um, we can have more allies. Until then, we are limited to more or less, more or less limited to three. Okay, so we have three. So we can't get any more allies until we send an emissary to each wheel clan. Well, um... I kind of don't want to send one out right now because I'm assuming the, uh... The caravan's already out there doing its thing. Even though I can't see it on the map, you would... You would hope that I could see it on the map, but I can't. We have a bit of magic. We could do a ritual, but we probably want to leave that to the end of the year. So, really this is just me stalling while trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do now. Um, maybe we can send out an emissary. To more of the wheel tribes perhaps though they do really dislike me it appears uh, plans you send an ever to emissary to okay so the check mark means different things on different screens on this screen it means you've sent an emissary to them on the other screen, it means you've sent a caravan to them. Okay, sure. So we'll ignore the uh, wheel plans for now, and maybe we'll try to send some more. Ooh, they dislike us. But they owe us a favor, but I thought they disliked us. Okay, Eyes of Gold, I'll send you an emissary. Um, I mean, I don't really want to bring you anything. We should have more friends among the Ram Clans? No, we dislike them. They're bad people. Okay, maybe they're not, but... We already have a lot of allies. Our best chance of adding another is with the Honey Mains, but it would be easier if we showed our commitment to diplomacy by sending emissaries more clans first. Okay, um... You know what? I know our herds are pretty crap, but I will take... seven herds. And I will take, uh... Somebody that's okay, good at bargaining, good at diplom very good at diplomacy, excellent at combat. Zakorda, you go out and do this. I know you're a, a council member, but we're sending to people that don't really like us. So take three swords with you, take uh, ten bowmen with you, and just go out and say hi. Our caravan is back from the Grey Wings. The Grey Wing traders were pleased to receive the first caravan we'd sent their way. They agreed to trade with us on a regular basis, and we made a profit from this trip. Alright, way to go. We already have as many alliances we can, as we can support. Yeah, I gotcha. Um, just give gifts, call in a favor, propose an alliance, discuss tribute. No, we're not going to demand tribute from anybody. We can't just propose an alliance, and we could try to call in a favor, but you know what? We don't need it right now. So let's just give gifts. We sent Zakorda to give seven cows to the Eyes of Gold clan. Zakorda reports, Our gifts were graciously received by the Eyes of Gold. I believe they are now, they're more favorably disposed towards us now. Oh, but mood minus. Uh, what are these weird leech worms? Um, some kind of lampreys falling from the sky. Oh, they are lampreys. Uh, lampreys, eel like fish with rasping sucker mouths fall from the sky into your village. Terrifying the people. Once they land, they lie on the ground gasping. Then your shamans realize what's happening. They're draining the life out of your sworn spirits. Don't do that, lampreys. Already, they've eaten the butterfly spirit. No! Bad guys. People find the, the flopping creatures and club them to death. But the damage is already done. Who did that? 
uh, call on Elmal to erect a defense against lamprey rain, call stork spirits to be on guard and eat any lampreys they found in the sky, conduct a divination, or inspire the people to remain calm. So you, you say the people want action and not words, so we should do something? No story that I know of includes falling lampreys. Exactly! Who's ever heard of lampreys falling from the sky? You know, except for maybe in that, like, early 2000s uh, sci-fi original, like, Blood Lake, Attack of the Lampreys or something like that. But though, I think they were crawling, not falling from the sky. This will keep happening no matter what we do? Come on, Sarissa. No, it won't. Who's ever heard of lampreys falling out of the sky before? Ordinarily, lampreys are delicious when cooked in butter, but these are no ordinary lampreys. Um, Island Dry, why did I bring you on the council? You're useless. In the old days, we did not traffic in spirits. Give me glorious battle, not this madness. As best as we can, we must ensure that this does not happen again. Okay, you know what? Spirit for spirit. They eat our spirit, we call upon the storks to eat them up. Do your shamans perform the long and taxing version of the ritual? Yes. Our shamans drew the beast and sky runes on their drums. Stork spirits promised to scour the sky for any more lampreys and gobble up those they found. So I got a minus magic and I think it said something about plus, um, maybe plus mood or something. So let's check, um, is our spirit gone? She is. Honey bee or not honey bee, uh, butterfly. Butterfly is gone. She's been eaten. We could perhaps try to send another, um, what season is it? Later on season. We could try to send another, another caravan out. Maybe to establish another trade route. Our insufficient number of goats is making it hard to feed the clan. Yeah, whatever. Our market will likely make a profit of 24 cows worth of goods this year. Our crafter should be, should make about 56 cows. So getting some, some goods coming in. Sure. Oh, now you're like, oh, our food stockpiles are good, but we'll probably be eating them into the co over the coming year. Come on, you were so excited about our food stockpiles last time, dude. Uh, let's establish another trade route. Zatenna, you can go. We can't store food indefinitely, and we have enough stockpiled right now. Okay. Um, who is our other... What about Brilliant Hoof? Brilliant Hoof, do you want to join? Do you want to come along, Brilliant Hoof? And join the, uh, the merriment at the annual goods market here at Sky Dancer? We should have more spirits sworn to help us. I would be happy to go on a mission to find one. I'm confident of success. Okay, so you can do that. So that's a thing you're asking to do. Well, it's dark season, so I don't think that's what we should be talking about right now, mister. Um, instead, can we learn more about taming the river? Because we may want to, if we can, do this, um, this ritual. So, when water first invaded, the Emperor tamed only the Oslira River. So each time that his realm floods, uh, Reladivas of Nivora masters the water of the Arcos River, forcing them into a proper riverbed. But what's the long story? And how long is it? Oh, it's not too long. So we'd need to try to remember this. Which means I will fail to remember this. One day, something new came roaring into the world. From the north rushed great blue serpents, cutting deep ravines into the earth and drowning all those who posed them. Okay, so they created rivers. Got it. Um, Shargash and his drummers marched out to fight the invasion, but they were swamped and had to flee. The Emperor strode forth. A blue snake surged towards him. He gave the shovel and bucket to his servants, and they used them to tame the serpent. This was Oslira, who has ever since flowed past the city, Emperor's city in her new banks. Okay, so they made levees. Cool. 
Um, but the rest of the Empire were still flooded. Excuse me, I will move the mouse. Relativus, the son of the gods Elmol and Avora. How many people is Elmol married to? Um, set out to protect his mother's city. First he had to find the chief, an immense blue dragon. The dragon was guarded by so much spray and mist that it could not see the god uh, approaching in its brilliance. Relativus burst into searing radiance and the mist and spray fled, leaving a much smaller dragon. It attacked but found itself boiling away. It offered riches to Relativus, but Relativus was not tempted and pushed forward. Finally, the dragon capitulated. Relativus compelled it to flow peacefully as the Arcos and yield its treasure to its people. Uh, but the Arcos was untrustworthy. Oh, flow peacefully as the Arcos. Um, not, not that the Arcos is something else. You're saying become the river Arcos and flow peacefully. Gotcha. Not be like the Arcos, but literally be the Arcos. Okay. Um, but the Arcos was untrustworthy when Relativus had to fight the rain folk. Arcos rose up and flooded the land again. After Relativus dealt with the rain folk, he asked Relandar for a map of the realm. Feigning injury, he returned to Arcos. Sensing weakness, the dragon lunged for Relativus, but Relativus was ready and raced towards the nearest valley, then across a plain to another, then turned again. Following the plan he and Relandar had made, the dragon chased after, but quickly tired and was easily compelled to stay in its new banks. Okay, so this is the creation myth of why... Uh, why rivers are windy, because Relativus ran back and forth and back and forth and made the dragon uh, follow him. Sure, I get you. Um, again, Arcos could not keep its word and rose up to flood the land again. This time Relativus consulted with Akarna, who gave him a clay jar that she sealed with wax and gum. Relativus brought it to Arcos, who was intrigued by the jar and took the form of a beautiful blue woman. She tried to seduce Relativus, but he rebuffed her. Finally, she offered a reed basket full of pearls of all hues, but Relativus would only trade if she returned to her channel. Arcos agreed and used the jar to make a great lake in which to bathe and raise her children. The Arcos can never be truly tamed, but Relativus could always master it. Okay, so let's try to remember this in case it's important. There are serpents that are essentially rivers. The emperor um, of the town, the city, um, created some levees, and the Osira River, or whatever his name was, Oslira, was fine. But now there's this other one that Relativus had to deal with, so Relativus first used blazing light and fire to reach the the dragon and burn it up but then it rose up again he ran around and made it tired it rose up again and he did not accept the basket full of pearls pearls etc etc he used a jar and that made a great lake okay gotcha we understand now is it possible to do a ritual of taming the river why won't it let me do this one we don't know the sacred story well enough to perform another worldly ritual um how do we know that how do we learn those probably sacrifice to them and r means that we've done it already you ought to reward us for enacting the ritual just five years ago gaining her blessing again so soon will be especially hard i got you maybe that's r for recent and r for or r for done r for performed recently And backwards R for failed. And R with lines in to say we did it at some point. Visiting the other side is always risky. The story is a rough map. But the God's War rages continues to rage. Improve your chances by having treasures related to the deity. And circle members who relate to the story. Okay. Well. Candidates for Taming the River. Which calls for some competent fighting and negotiating. Um... I don't suppose anyone knows about, uh, well, you know Relandar. Was Relandar not one of the names? It was, it wasn't Relandar, right? Who was it? 
I'm sorry. I have to go back. It was... Oh, Relandar was part of it, but it was Relandivus. Relandar did something, but Relandivus was the one. I don't know if... Relandivus is not a full god. Relandivus is a half-god of Elmal and Nivora. I don't know. That's probably getting way too much in the weeds. So, let's go back and try again. Ritual. Tame the river. Oh, I didn't even select the person. Whoops. Whoopsie. Okay, um, well, you know what? Uh, that may have been a mistake. You embark on a ritual to send one of your your number to the side of Relativus as he defends Navora. To tame the river, you will need to perform the ritual using water from it. The Oslira River is both more powerful and further away than the Black Eel, so using its waters will make the ritual more challenging. You have yet to tame either one. Which river's water do you prepare with? Uh, the Black Eel River, please? Do you seek the aid of other riders? I'm sure. Three clan circles said yes, eager to fight the forces of water. Our priest said that their support could be a significant factor in the success of the ritual. You also seek assistance of the Wheels. Their ancestors also lived in Relativa City, but over the generations have allowed errors to creep into the stories they tell about him. No. Um, you, we need the true account, so no. As descendants of Nivora, any clan member can attempt the ritual, even though you no longer worship Relativus. Whoever you choose should be competent at fighting and negotiating. Okay, so we get this option here. Gotcha. Um, fighting and negotiating. Well, you have excellent bargaining, but no combat ability. Excellent good. Very good fair. Very good fair. Good good. Good fair. Good very good. So we had one excellent good. I think it might be a Nala. But she has good lore, she also has good lore. And you have fair lore. Okay, Anala, go for it. Um, who do you choose? The ritual calls for someone competent in fighting and negotiating. We choose Anala. What do you sacrifice to speed Anala on her path? Hmm. Didn't know that uh, sacrificing was part of this. So, um. I'm going to have to say goods, even though I've been trying to protect goods. Let's say 10 goods. It hurts, but I don't want to dip into our herds anymore. The priest worried that the sacrifice was not enough. Well, you know what? You didn't tell me what it should have been, so you should have told me, priests. Okay, Anala rides back to the days of the Golden City. The fields and the pastures outside are drowned by floodwaters, though Emperor... Murharzalm has sent word that he had tamed the river after Shargosh fell to. Anala can see the blue dragon Arcos surging over the land outside the city. The emperor had done nothing for Nivora. Um, subdue the dragon by force. Use cunning to defeat the dragon. Trade valuables with the dragon. Command the dragon to retreat. Um, command him to retreat, I think, is the first thing we did. Basically, we went in, like, full force um, and burned them up, right? And then they used cunning, and then they traded valuables. Okay, so command him or subdue him by force? What did they do? I'm going to say subdue by force because burning him up by fire sounds like subduing him by force. But you're not a great warrior, but I'm going to choose it anyways. Anala charged her horse straight into the water, shooting flaming arrows at the dragon's head. They disappeared into it with barely a hiss. Uh, that's not great. Ar Arco snorted a jet of spray, blinding Anala. Her horse saved her. Her horse saved him from the next attack, but Anala had to flee. The flames extinguished. The dragon continued to overrun the fields. It was some time before it left, and the citizens wept in hunger. That was not a great option. Anala rides off to the blur of the gods' war, then suddenly she is back in Devora, again looking out at the submerged fields. Okay, so we get to do it again. Dragon Orcus is back, hoping to flood the realm once more. So let's command the dragon to retreat. We've screwed up again. 
When Nala rode boldly out to confront Arco, she ordered it to withdraw and flow only within restricted boundaries. The, the dragon replied, You are no emperor. With that, it hurled Anala, who was hard pressed to return to the city. The horse was not so lucky, and it was swept away. Soaking wet, Anala could only watch as the dragon continued swamping the pasture. It was years before it left, and the citizens cried in hunger. Okay, one more time. One more time. Use cunning to defeat them. Sometimes rituals fail, even if you follow the known story. You can reduce the risk of this uh, by selecting a skilled ritualist and granting her magical aid at sacred time or through sacrifices. So that does not sound like we succeeded. Or you may just need to give up when you can. Or try to game when you can. The other world is dangerous for humans. Above all, don't give up. After consulting a map of the realm, Anala rode out, slumped in the saddle as if sorely wounded. Sensing weakness, the dragon lunged at her. Anala raced towards the nearest valley. But when she turned across the plain for the next one, Arcos was already there. Whether she had mistaken the submerged landmarks or the dragon had outwitted her, um, Anala could not say. In the end, she was trapped on a hilltop and could only watch the waters rage around her. It was many seasons before the waters receded and the citizens became faint with hunger. Anala returned rejected, dejected from the era of the first flood. She said that trying to command the dragon was not one of her best ideas. Everyone felt that they had let down their ancestors. Our unsuccessful ritual did no favors with those who came to help. Our detractors spread the story of a failure to all the rider clans. That's not very nice. But we did get plus four goods. The caravan is back from the Brilliant Hoofs. The Brilliant Hoof traders we pleased to receive the first car car from caravan we'd sent their way. They agreed to trade with us on a regular basis, and we made a profit. Still the dark season. We're out of magic, though. We used it all up. And the clan mood is worried. And so I don't want to send anybody out because we have 60 goods, though. That's great. Um, so we may want to consider doing that uh, decorating the clan hall next time. So that was bad. I think we're just going to end the turn because I don't want to do anything else right now because it's it's dark season and I'm not going to send anybody out in this. So let's just end the turn, please. Um, no venture this year. Like... Did it not, like, bring up the thing it normally does? Like, have we just not reached the... the... the magic season yet, I guess? It's just weird that it brought up no venture this year? Well, can I select a venture? Can I say clan hall decorations? Um, it selected you, so sure, whatever. A series of misfortunes plagued our attempt to decorate the clan hall. Termites ate one of the key pillars, moss got into the tapestries, and one of the old women died before passing on her family's designs. That the work would have would have to be restarted at a more auspicious time, and Ala figured that we had lost 15 cows worth of goods. She said that more clan magic devoted to crafts would improve our luck next time. Minus 32 hard. Hurts, huh? Our herders report that Dar Shamai store 32 get herds or 32 cows in a herd raid. They were gone before our patrols could reach them. We can ill afford this loss. That is correct. We cannot afford this loss. So, I guess I will end... <laughs> you know what? I'm going to end this uh, episode on a down note. We are just completely failing at everything. We're failing at life. You suck, Star Dancer Clan. Why do you suck so bad? Okay, so thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed enjoyed it, even though we sucked. And I hope to see you again next time.